What is your name, please? My name is Joseph P. McAvoy. What is your name, please? My name is Joseph P. McAvoy. What is your name, please? My name is Joseph P. McAvoy. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Joseph P. McAvoy and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Geritol, America's number one tonic. Geritol, the fast-acting, high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger, fast, presents To Tell the Truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Now may I introduce our panel. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Burden. My name is Dick Clark. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is High Gardner. Dick, speaking for all of us, I want to tell you how happy we are that you could take the time to step down off that mighty important bandstand of yours and be with us tonight. Thank you, bud. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, believe me, it's our pleasure. Hope you find the uh, rhythm around here cool enough and to your liking. <laughs> My average on this game is very bad. <laughs> <laughs> you play along at all? Well, good. I hope you're all doing that right now, as a matter of fact. As you heard, these three gentlemen all claim to be Joseph P. McAvoy. And, of course, only one is the real Joseph P. McAvoy. The other two have merely assumed that identity. And they are the ones who do not have to stick to the truth. Now, will you please listen while I read this affidavit? I, Joseph P. McAvoy, started on a new job yesterday morning. I work at Grand Central Station, and I'm responsible for the gate men, the red caps, the train announcers, the information service, and the arrival and departure of the 55 million annual passengers who ride the more than 500 daily trains. I am the new general station master at Grand Central Station here in New York City. Signed, Joseph P. McAvoy. <laughs> Our panel, we all heard these three gentlemen claim to be Joseph P. McAvoy, General Station Master at Grand Central Station. Only the real Joseph P. McAvoy is required to answer your questions truthfully. You will each question until you hear this signal, and at the end of the questioning period, you will be asked to register your vote for the one who, in your opinion, is the real Joseph P. McAvoy. And let's begin tonight's questioning with uh, Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Number one, who do you work for? The New York Central Railroad Company. Number two, uh, what is the strangest request as, as station master you have ever heard of? I know you've never been requested yet, but what is the strangest you've ever heard of? The strangest I ever heard of was to my predecessor to strew a bed of orchids along a platform for arriving Hollywood stuff. Uh, <laughs> do you know who the star was? Well, I don't think I should go into that. I oh, <laughs> please do. <laughs> Number three, is it true that the 20th century used to pay the passengers for every minute they were late? At one time, that was true. When did they stop? I don't know. <laughs> when they started being late. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, can you telephone from a train? Yeah, mo most certainly. When? Well, any time there's a phone aboard the train, you can telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Garden. Number one, are, are public porters permitted to operate at Grand Central? No, they are not. Uh, number two, what are public porters? Public porters are the men without red caps who operate in subways and adjacent to the terminal. They must surrender to a red cap when they reach the uh -huh. terminal. Number three, are the clocks at Grand Central Terminal on, on the Eastern uh, Standard Time or Daylight Time? They are on Daylight Time. When do they change? They change at the change of time in April. Uh-huh. Uh, number one, uh, how much do red caps get per piece of baggage? 35 cents a piece. Uh, number two, when was uh, Johnny Conroy station master at Grand Central? Do you know? In the 1930s. Do you know number three? Uh, I uh, don't know that he was Do you remember master. number one? No, I do not. Uh -huh. Number one, there's a red cap car in which they hold church services every morning. Do you know who the pastor of that uh, uh, Baptist church uh, car is? No, I do not. You know anything about the church, three? Polly? Uh, Sorry. Um, number one, what does uh, number 15 Vanderbilt mean to you? 
Number 15 Vanderbilt is the entrance to the CBS studios, which are located on the fourth floor of the 42nd Street side of the station. Anything else you'd like to know, Pop? Could you tell me who's on television tonight? <laughs> I am. <laughs> You're hearing that, too? I am. I am. <laughs> number, uh, number two, what are the two railroads that you, two railroad companies that use Grand Central Station? New York Central and New York and Haven. Uh, number three, um, what year was Grand Central Station built, do you know? Uh, in 1903, its, it's uh, construction was started. 1906? Number two, how long would it take me on the New Haven Railroad to get to Mount Vernon, New York? About 20 minutes. Number three, how long would it take me to get to Mount Vernon? Uh, about uh, 23 minutes. <laughs> I don't know. Never number has one. yet, has it, Dick? I don't know. <laughs> uh, number one, of what railroad is John P. Loudermilk president? John P. Loudermilk. I do not know. Number two? I don't know. Number three? I do not know. Okay, Zoops. Must be a small railroad. <laughs> Short line. Uh, number two, the Pennsylvania Railroad, though it does not travel from Grand Central Station, if I were to write a letter of complaint about the dining service, who would I write to? And the New York Central, you write it to the New York Central because they operate all the dining services and Pullman services. There's no more Pullman. Would you? That's it. It's time to vote, panel. So without consultation, will you please mark your ballots? And in so doing, you will, of course, select number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers, as you know, will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. <coughs> panel, are you all marked? Oh, you are, Polly. Head of the game tonight. For whom did you vote this first round? Well, Bud, you know, I've been getting a lot of letters of complaint about the fact that I always don't know who to vote for and i vote for number one but i think it's number two and they all think that i make it up just to be funny they don't think that i seriously don't know and uh, which is flattering but not true and so in response to all of those rather difficult letters i would firmly like to vote for number one though i'm sure it's number two <laughs> You're just as firm about number two, I assume. Yes. Dick, what about your vote? Bud, uh, I'm forced to agree with, uh, with Polly. I vote for number two because I like the way he said his name. <laughs> She's checking well, up she voted him. with number one. That's yes, right. number one, but she says she thought it was I thought it was number one. Right. Kitty, what about your vote? Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty? Oh, gosh. I voted for number two on the basis of his information. And number three didn't know when the century stopped paying. So they're being late, and I thought he ought to know. All right, hi, Gardner. Well, I voted for number one, too. Uh, one of the reasons for is he knew about General Porters, and that, that uh, you have to know a little bit about railroading for that. And, and number two, wasn't sure about when Conroy was station master, and I made the name up, so I think it's <laughs> three, but I was... There we go again. Well, okay. I knew you made that the name. Book. <laughs> The votes are in, the deceptions have been pulled by the panel as well as by us, and we'll find out now, for your sake and ours, which one of these three gentlemen is the real station master at Grand Central Station. So will the real Joseph P. McAvoy now please stand up. All right. My, we had such good reasons, too, didn't we? <laughs> Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you really do, please? My name is George O'Keefe. I am a re registered representative with Hershen Company, members of the New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, what about you, sir? My name is Tom Malley. I'm a writer and editor associated with The Reporter magazine. <laughs> For you. We had all incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $1,000 from Jared Hall, gentlemen. Thank you very much for being with us. Happy train, train schedules, and on your way out, you will find an apothecary jar of Jared Hall for each of you. Good night and good luck. <laughs> and now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Margaret O'Neill. What is your name, please? My name is Margaret O'Neill. What 
is your name, please? My name is Margaret O'Neill. All right, please listen while I read this affidavit. I, Margaret O'Neill, am a former high school teacher and a former ski instructor. For the past 13 years, however, I have been associated with the Miss America pageant. I am the official traveling companion and pageant representative for Miss America, and as such have traveled 450,000 miles in the past three years. When the new Miss America is chosen on Saturday, I will again accompany her on a tour of the United States and Europe. Signed, Margaret O'Neill. Okay, panel, we've heard these three ladies all claiming to be Margaret O'Neill, Miss America traveling companion. We'll start this cross-examination with Dick Clark. Dick? Number two, how many contestants are there in this year's pageant? Fifty-two. Number three, how many contestants? There are fifty-two contestants. Number one? Fifty-two. Consistent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number one, who is Evelyn I? I believe she was the Miss America of 1953. Uh, number three, if this is true, where did Evelyn I live? Evelyn I lives in Verona, New Jersey. Number two, where does Evelyn I, or where did she live? when she Eff won. Effort of PA. And number one? Effort of PA. Uh, is there a Miss Alaska in the contest this year, number three? Yes, there is a Miss Alaska. Kitty? Number one, who are the judges this year in the Miss America contest? You are one, Miss Carlisle. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Well, I want to say, for, I want to say that I never, I was a judge last year. And I never saw any of these ladies before. So I don't know. They must, be, they never, must, they must all traveled. be ringers. <laughs> you never traveled with Miss America. <laughs> Number two, uh, how many sisters does the present Miss America have? She has three sisters. Three sisters. Number three, who is Hugh Wathen? Hugh Wathen. Number two, who is Hugh Wathen? Uh, he works uh, on the pageant board. Uh, number one, who was Miss Indian America last year? I'm sorry, I don't remember. Number two, who do the uh, contestants have breakfast with every morning? Uh, uh, and where do they breakfast? They have breakfast with the judges. Hi. Uh, number two, what Broadway columnist has been a judge uh, every once in a while for the pageant? I am number one. No, I, I, I said number two. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. I don't know. Number one, would you know? What Broadway columnist? Yes. Uh, number sir? three, would you? I'm sorry. Sir? Uh, would you know number three? I don't believe you call Bennett sir at Broadway columnist, but he has been a judge. No, I don't think even Bennett would do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number two, what did Bob Russell have to do with the pageant in the past? He was a master ceremony. Uh, number one, uh, do you know the name of Miss Alaska? I happened to see her last week. I don't remember. Would you know number two? No, I don't Number know. three? No, I do Polly? not know. Uh, number three, who is the lady in charge of the Miss America pageant? Leona Slaughter, wife of my boss. <laughs> number two, um, who placed second in the Miss America contest last year? Miss Georgia. Number one, who placed third? Number one, who placed Richie? third last year? Richie. I beg your pardon? Richie. I, I can't hear you. Richie. Richie? Miss Richie, Miss you mean Richie. her last name Miss is Richie. Richie. Oh, Same I see. Richie. Uh, what state is she from, number one? Colorado. Uh, number three, um, who was the Miss America of 1955? 1955. Um, well, oh, that was Sharon. Big one? Did you know? Sharon Richie. Okay, there we go now. <laughs> Our time is out. We'll have to uh, vote, and without consultation, will you please mark your ballot? And in so doing, as you did before, please select number one, number two, or number three. Are we all set, panel? Everyone but Polly? Oh, you didn't have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> is this a firm vote? No, this is probably the unfirmest <laughs> vote of all the votes, because I, I really have no idea which one it is. I, I simply just picked a number. I, I don't know anything about Miss America contests. 
It makes it a little difficult when you don't know. <laughs> How about you, Dick Clark? Uh, I picked number two because she knew that uh, Evelyn and I lived in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. Hmm? Your vote, Kitty? I picked number two on the basis of all of her information, which was all correct. And some of the others had correct answers, but not all correct. And hi, who do you think is the real well, one? this is unusual for a Miss America contest, <laughs> but I make it unanimous, <laughs> number two. Well, all right, there we are, unanimous on number two. Let's see how unanimous we are with your voting at home, as we trust you are doing. As we learn right now, which one of these three ladies is the real Miss America's traveling companion? So will the real Margaret O'Neill please stand up? <laughs> you got her! <laughs> One thing about our panel, if they goof strong, they come back strong. <laughs> at least we say that for them. Thank you, number two. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? Yes, my name is Eve Jackson. I live in New York City. I'm a housewife and have three children. And number three, what about you? My name is Mrs. Bernard Shore, Vice President of the Shore Battery and Equipment Company of Jamaica, Long Island. <laughs> Incidentally, we're mighty proud that our lovely Kitty is going to be judging the lovelies, as you heard in the questioning down there at uh, Atlantic City. And you can see it this Saturday night on this very network, so you be sure to be watching. Maybe you'll get a sneak look at Kitty there, too. <laughs> well, now, let's see. We have 100% uh, again our challenges this time, which means that uh, Geritol contributes $150, ladies, so that you have that to divide. On your way out, stop and pick up your apothecary jar of Geritol. Thanks so much for being with us. Good night and happy traveling. Now, there will be more challengers and uh, more laughs, of course, in less than a minute. Now, let's have our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Johnston McCulley. What is your name, please? My name is Johnston McCulley. What is your name, please? My name is Johnston McCulley. Now, please listen while I read this affidavit. I, Johnston McCulley, have been a writer for over 50 years. After finishing school, I entered the newspaper field. I eventually gave up newspaper work to devote full time to fiction writing. My most famous novel was written in 1920 and was twice made into a motion picture. The main character is now the subject of a television series. I am the creator of Zorro, signed Johnston McCulley. And now we have three gentlemen panel, all claiming to be Johnston McCulley, as you heard, creator of the famous character Zorro. We'll start this round with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, bud. Number one, who plays the, uh, the current Zorro? Uh, Williams. Guy Williams. Uh, number two, where is the series shot? In California. At what studio, number two? Uh, I personally don't know. Number three, could you tell me what studio it's shot at? No, well, partly a Disney studio. Uh, studio? I didn't hear that. Disney, Disney, Disney Studios. Um, number one, uh, do you agree with uh, number three? Where is the series shot? Uh, Burbank, California. At what studio, sir? I don't know the studio. Uh, uh, number two, who played the original Zorro? The Disney Studios. The Douglas Fairbanks. Uh, where the was silent the, film. Where was that movie made, number two? Uh, I don't know. Dick Clark. Number three, what is the name of Zorro's deaf-mute friend? Beg pardon? Well, uh, in the play, in the series, Zorro has a friend, a close associate with the deaf-mute. What is Bernardo. his name? Bernardo. I beg your pardon? Bernardo. All right. Number one, uh, what is the name of the rather plump sergeant he's always having conflict with? That was Gonzalez. Number two, a hit recording was made recently called Zorro. What were, beg your pardon, what was the name of the artist or artists that made the record? I don't know. It had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, do you know? 
I know Norman Foster wrote the words. I don't know the name of it. Number one, do you know, know the name of the artist who made the uh, record? No. Kitty? Number one, who's president of the Authors League? Number two, are you a member of the Authors League? Not now, no. Are you a member of the Authors League number I two? I am not. Are you number three? Not a president. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, <laughs> number one, what does Zorro mean? The fox in Spanish. Number two, uh, did you, was this story uh, based on anything? Yes, it was based upon a serial that I wrote. It was originally published in the Argosy. Number three, was this based on a serial that you wrote? Yes, it was based on a serial I wrote. And did you get this idea uh, out of your own head, or was it based on an idea that you got from some other place? Well, I got it. Where else would one get an idea? Yeah. Well, Shakespeare got all his ideas out of a uh, ping dong. Don't say Charles Bacon, he'll start a whole thing. Hi, Gardner. <laughs> Number three, you probably knew Douglas Fairbanks if he made the silent movie. Who was the fellow named Carl K. Kitchen? Would you know? A fellow named what? Carl K. Kitchen. Yes. He was a uh, newspaper man who worked from New York and did a lot of work for Douglas Fairbanks. Uh -huh. Number one, uh, uh, Doug Fairbanks, when he made that movie or later, became one of the creators of United Artists. Do you know who his partners were? No. Would you know number three? Mary Pickford and Charles Chaplin. Yeah, number three, would you know? Same, Mary Pickford and Charles Chaplin. Uh -huh. uh, there is a, a comedian, number three, who is against your show in Hollywood right now. Or rather, his show is against your show. Uh, would you know what his name is? Would you know? That's it. Time once again to vote. So will you please mark your ballot panel, and in so doing, as you did before, select number one, number two, or number three. Hey, ready and waiting, Polly, huh? For whom did you vote this time? I voted for number three, uh, mainly because he said Johnson McCulley so easily as though it were a name he had used for many years. <laughs> All right, Dick Clark, what about your selection this time? His name is probably Horace Applewhite. It was my luck, <laughs> yes, I think. I'm with you. Oh, well. <laughs> number three, because he seemed to know a little bit about a very, very big record that should have been important to him. Mm -hmm. Kitty? I voted for number three. It turns out we're playing against each other here because the train fellow was invented by High. I believe that number three knew Mr. Kitchen, who was the associate. So if I'm playing against you, then I'm playing against everything. <laughs> All right, High, what about okay, you? Okay, Kitchen was, a, was a, one of the first Broadway columnists on the old evening world and the sun, and he was a close friend of Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford, and that's why I you voted didn't for number three. Right. <laughs> well, again, we have a unanimous vote, and let's see if that unanimity spreads to you in your home as we discover right now which one of these three gentlemen is the real creator of the famous character Zorro. So, with the real Johnston McCulley, please stand up. Ah! Ah! Thank you very much, sir. Well, the panel's doing real well tonight after a bad start. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is Edwin Stafford Morgan. I'm a stockbroker with Shearson Hamill and Company in Wall Street. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and number two, would you tell us about yourself? I am Campbell Jeffrey. For more than 45 years, a member of the New York Bar and the retired dean of New York Law School. Thank you, sir. <laughs> You zeroed in rather well there, panel, tonight. And as we see, we have a panel guessing correctly 100%, which means that once again, since there were no incorrect votes, Jared Hall contributes $150 to you gentlemen with our best wishes uh, for a pleasant year and many years ahead of you in your writing and more work in that old Zorro field. It must be fun to see it coming back to life again and again and again like that. And will you stop on your way out, speaking of coming to life again, and pick up your apothecary jars of Jared Hall. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Good night and good luck. Now we'll join our panel again in just a minute, but before we do, listen. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight, except once again, Dick, thanks so very much for visiting us. Thank you, Bud, very much. Uh, how was our average? Uh, good. 
Extremely good. Yes, indeed it was. You did exceptionally well for a visiting <laughs> guest the first time, believe me. Incidentally, next week on our panel, we're going to have Fred Clark. Is he any relation to you? No, no. Well, he's watched be... him many times. Oh, so have him. we all. And he'll be with us on our panel next week. I guess that's it. So, good night, panel. Good night, good night Bud. Good night. Now, this is Bud Collier saying good night from Geritol and reminding all of you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is the Mark Goodson Bill Bartlett, a in association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Bergen Dow by Wilmot.